Hey guys, and thanks for tuning in to Tech Stuff and More. And today I want to talk about CW. Um, do you need to learn CW or do you want to learn CW? And, uh, uh, or are you just curious or do you want to improve your existing CW skills to uh, improve your chances of getting responses to your CQ calls? And that is actually a thing which I will get back to. Um, my call is uh, Lima Bravo 3 Sierra Alpha and uh, I have been a, I've been a CW instructor uh, for a few years and I was also a volunteer examiner in Canada for a few years uh, for ham radio exams. Um, so what I want to start with is, uh, is to, uh, to try to give you three good reasons for why you may want to learn CW. So here it goes. Reason number one, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it really is. When I got my license, um, it was in 1976. I was only 14 years old. We had a CW requirement. Uh, it was only eight words per minute to get the B license, which only allowed you to go to go on the air with QRP radios and only CW. And um, and then when I got 16, when I turned 16, then uh, I could get up to the exam for the A license, which allowed me to do full legal power and also single sideband. Then I had to pass CW exam where I had to copy uh, 12 words per minute. Um, so um, it, was, uh, it was not very easy uh, then. And, uh, but, but these days, Norway, uh, just like uh, many other countries or most other countries, dropped the CW requirement. And uh, of course, that's logical. And uh, because otherwise, uh, uh, they probably wouldn't have been able to recruit that many new ham radio operators, particularly not with all the new digital modes and, and all that. So, so it makes sense. <clears throat> but anyways, um, because there was a requirement when I took my license, that's probably the only reason I was given the, the or forced to be given the chance to, to learn how much fun CW is. And I'm very happy about that. Today, um, about 95% of all my contacts on, on HF, at least, are on CW. And I'm pretty sure if you ask any ham that are CW proficient, I'm pretty sure they will tell you that most of their contacts is on CW. <clears throat> and there's a reason for that. It's because they think it's fun. So, uh, um, so that's, that's one of the reasons. And, and also it's, uh, it's just that you are actually mastering something. Um, the feeling of mastering something that not everyone knows. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice, of course, and, and also if you turn on your HF radio and you tune in to, to, uh, to uh, CW stations in the QSO and uh, maybe rag chewing, uh, even if you're watching TV or if you're surfing the internet on your computer, you will still understand and hear what they're saying, even, even if you don't focus on it when you know C CW that well. It's actually very cool. Uh, it's like a whole different language. It just translates automatically in your head and, and you just understand uh, like in clear text what they are what they're saying. Uh, so that's reason number one. Reason number two, um, there is a lot of cool gear uh, for CW enthusiasts. And um, for instance, the QRP labs, they have some kits, uh, QCX and QMX, which is a five band transceiver. It doesn't cost very much. You build it yourself. I think it's like $100 and you have a five band transceiver, but it's only CW, at least for now. Um, so, and, and there is a lot of other cool gear as well, which is CW gear. <clears throat> so that's another um, thing for me anyways. I love cool gear. Uh, which you might have seen from some of, some of my other reviews as well. <clears throat> also, with the cool gear, some of it uh, is very lightweight. Uh, it uses very little power. So, for instance, the last five-band transceiver from, uh, from uh, QRP Labs, QMX, I think it uses 80 milliamps on receive. It's not very much. You can just bring a small battery with you and you can operate soda or poda with it and, uh, and not need anything else. Or you can just operate directly from, from solar panel or, or something. So, um, so that's very cool. And reason number three, uh, it reach far. It will reach further than single sideband, no doubt. Um, it will reach just as far as FT8. 
Maybe FT8 will even reach further. Uh, but for me, FT8 is, uh, is not as much fun as, as a CW. Um, I have tried FT8. I've given it a chance. I set it up and it was a lot of fun setting up and getting the first QSOs. But after that, it was, uh, it was not, not for me. But that's okay. Um, FT8 is still a lifesaver for ham radio operators that are moving into apartments and that can't have big antennas. They can just put up a small loop because FT8 it only requires a bandwidth of about this much and a loop only gives you a bandwidth of about this much. So you can just set the loop and you can have a lot of contacts with low power gear on FT8. So it has its place, definitely. Um, so, uh, so those are, are, are some of the reasons that I think uh, could be incentives for why you should learn CW. Uh, you will definitely have a lot of fun with it. So let's talk about um, how you can learn CW. There are a few different ways and the most common way is likely that your local ham radio club uh, is starting up a course and they do a course where you meet up a couple, a couple days a week and after a few months um, you know CW uh, well enough to start having contacts and first when you start having contacts that's when your speed and everything accelerates. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Another way is to uh, to do an online course or online uh, software. You can download a lot of different kind of softwares on your mobile phone and everything so you can you can practice listening to CW. So the way it usually works, uh, even if you, uh, uh, whether you take a course at the, at the local ham radio club or if you do it online, um, one common way of doing it is that um, you learn first the five easiest letters. So for instance, A, E, I, uh, M or, or, or something. Um, just the five first easy letters. And then you spend maybe one week with someone sending those, those letters to you and you write down what they are. And then next week you learn five more letter, more letters. Next week five more, etc. Until you know the whole alphabet. And when you finish with the alphabet, it's most common to move on to numbers. And once you know the numbers, you move on to the signs. And once you know the alphabet and the numbers and the signs, then you start building speed. That's really how how the process is for for learning CW. Um, so uh, what you can also do is to get together with some buddies. If you have some, some buddies that also wants to learn CW, uh, you get together at least twice a week, not less th than that. And, uh, and uh, you can take turns in sending. So if you have a radio, you put it, uh, you turn off the box so you can send CW and use the oscillator in the radio um, <clears throat> and the other guys can copy. So uh, right away, some other hams might, uh, might think that, uh, no, 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 you can't start sending before you know how to receive. And uh, that was true. Uh, it was true back in the day where, where we used straight keys, uh, because then you could totally bung up your rhythm, uh, your rhythm if, you didn't, uh, if you didn't learn how to receive first. But with an electronic paddle, the rhythm is already set, at least for each individual letter. But uh, the rhythm you still have to learn is, uh, is the spacing between the letters and how that space relates to the spacing between the words. That's crucial, which I will talk about later in this video. Uh, that's very important. But it's not so hard if you start off slow. So uh, I have a couple of recommendations uh, for how you do this. Um, and. Um, and uh, maybe before I come to the recommendations, uh, I am planning on doing uh, live streaming on YouTube to do a CW course. If anyone is interested, please subscribe, as I mentioned before, and uh, and write a comment in the comment field so I can so I can gauge the interest for uh, for doing such a thing. So um, so my recommendation for for learning CW is that. Um, when you send or when you receive the letters, you can do it different ways. You can set the speed on whatever oscillator you're using to send code to, to the amount of words per minute. Uh, and um, what I recommend is to start with a fast word per minute, like 20 words per minute. So uh, each letter is, uh, is fast. So for instance, uh, the letter A is uh, dit da. Uh, so dot dash is the letter A. And if you're listening to it very slow, like when I learned CW, we did it all very slow. We did it all at eight words per minute. So it was like did, da, 
And uh, then you have to, then next letter came uh, almost immediately after. So it was two A's, it was like did, da, did, da, and then you have to write down A, A. But what's a lot easier is if you turn up, crank up that speed to 20 words per minute at least, so it's like did, da, that way you learn the rhythm of the letter. And, and so you, you don't sit there counting dots and dashes because that's not very efficient. You just learn the rhythm right away. And so then you just increase the space. So when you send two A's instead of did da, did da, it will be did da, did da. That's a lot easier. You get to think a little bit between each letter and um, that way you will learn it faster. So uh, what is a word anyways in words per minute? Uh, maybe most of you know this already, but what, but a word is Paris. Paris is the word. And so when you say 20, 25 words per minute, it just means that uh, within one minute you can send Paris 25 times. So that's really how, uh, how, how it is measured. So that's a bit about learning CW and one big warning uh, about, about this whole process. Um, it is totally normal, unless you're a superhuman, is that when you start learning, you learn the alphabet and the numbers and the signs, you start building speed. And you get to a certain point where you feel that you hit the wall. You come to this plateau and pretty much all of you, if you do this together, you may hit that plateau about at the same time. And um, and then you will be stuck there and you will be frustrated. You will think that uh, I don't have talent for this. I'm too old. Uh, I will never learn. And uh, that's when you just have to, uh, to, to bite it. You just have to continue. And only after two or three weeks, you will get past it. It's totally normal. You will hit the wall, uh, and you, but you will get past it. So uh, don't, don't let that discourage you, you either. Um, age to learn CW, uh, it doesn't matter really how, how old you are. Uh, um, we have this, uh, this net, myself and, and, and some friends, uh, every weekend. We, go down, we get on the air uh, early in the morning, we get on CW first for 15 minutes and then we move on to single sideband. But the way it started, it started just on single sideband. And then one of the guys in this net, he's very, very good with CW. He was a, a telegraphist in, in the Navy. And, um, and he said to, to a couple of the guys, he says, do you want to learn CW? So um, because that way we can start our, our net on CW and we just move over to SSB. So that's what we do. Uh, we are on CW for 15 minutes. A couple of the guys, they were not proficient at all. And I think, in fact, one of them hasn't, hadn't done any CW and he wanted to learn. That's only a little over two years ago. Now we are at 28 to 29, 30 words per minute. That is considered high-speed CW. That's fast. Um, and that's only after two years and change. So uh, it is possible, and these guys, they are, they are around 60 years old today, so, so uh, uh, age no limit. Um, as long as you're motivated uh, and as long as you don't give up uh, when you get to that plateau, uh, you just have to know it's coming, and, uh, and then you just have to think that this is no big deal, this is normal, I will get past this. So that's a bit about learning CW and, uh, and now uh, I want to, just at the end, I want to talk about how you can improve CW if you are already a CW operator. Um, so uh, on Facebook in different groups and also on the air, I hear some ham radio operators, they're saying that uh, I keep calling CQ on CW and I get no answers and ham radio is dying and, and, and all that. But no, ham radio is not dying. Um, if you just tune in to 20 meter band CW under a contest, you can, you can see it's not dying. Definitely not. Um, but when you're sending CQ call, so uh, when, I, when I got my license uh, back when I was 14, I had practiced um, copying code. And I thought I was pretty good at it. So I went into the examiner and I, he sent code first to five letter uh, combinations and then with the random letters and then clear text and I copied everything down and uh, he said, uh, you passed, everything is fine, but now I want you to send CW to me so I can see if you know how to send. And then we only had the straight keys. We did not have the paddles. So I said to him, I said, wait a minute, I haven't really practiced sending. Do I have to to pass here as well. He says, no, he says, I'll pass you anyway, he said, but if you don't send, or if you send poorly, no one will answer you. 
And that's very, very true. If you send poorly, it's just like talking in an accent no one understands or like you're mumbling or, or something. And the, the number one biggest error people do, and particularly experienced ham radio operators, is that they don't have enough space between the words or even maybe between the letters. So uh, I know this, this one guy, he's, he's very good at CW, he sends very fast, but as he has been getting more experienced, it's like, um, it's like you get a little complacent and you get a little sloppy and you think that uh, I, I know it so well now so I can send really fast. So then the, they are not increasing the speed of the letters, but they are decreasing the spacing. That's how they go faster which is totally wrong. You need to increase the speed of the letters and then keep good spacing. So, um, so that's also why I think, uh, why I think it's good for, for someone, like I mentioned earlier, maybe I didn't follow that point through when I said that one of you, if you do, if you train CW together in a group, one of you should send CW and you should emphasize the spacing between the letters and emphasize the spacing between the words that that space is longer than between the letters. Uh, that's how you speak clearly. It is really just like speaking clearly. So uh, I just can't say enough about that because there are so many I listen to. I tune around in the band. I'm waiting. I'm looking for some guy calling CQ so I can respond. And if someone is calling CQ and everything just goes like one string, I won't bother answering. I just go on to the next guy. And whoever sends nice and clear, clear spacing, I will answer that guy. So um, if you are, uh, if you're doing this yourself, um, you're probably not aware of it. So one way of trying to, to gauge yourself to see if you are, if you are doing the big crime of sending everything as one big, big string, um, if your radio supports uh, CW encoding, you should turn on the encoder. Uh, so it also works on transmit. Most, most radio supports also encoding on transmit the, these days. And then you should look at the, at the encoder on the screen or, or the, the decoder. Sorry, I'm, did I say encoding? Uh, uh, C, CW de decoding. So you should look at that decoding and see that uh, when you space between words, it's also spacing it on your decoder. If it doesn't, then you need to really practice on, on, uh, on the correct spacing. Uh, one way of doing it, uh, which I am doing incidentally, is, uh, is uh, I'm using my delay uh, for transmit when I, uh, when I send CW. So I have set the delay in such a way that, that it doesn't click into receive between the letters, but it does click into receive between the words. So I send, I get this really nice rhythm when I'm sending uh, the letters and then I space between the words and I hear the click in the receiver and then I send the next word. And uh, that's sort of my timing. And, um, and I, I think that works, works quite well. So those are, are, are the things I want to talk about. Uh, I really recommend learning CW. You will definitely not regret. Um, I promise you that. Uh, you'll be very happy you did it. Find someone to practice with, get on the air, uh, even if it goes very slow. There are areas on, uh, on 80 meters and different places where that are assigned to, to slow speed CW. And uh, it's really worth trying. So that's what I want to talk about. I hope it has been helpful for, for some and uh, I hope that you uh, subscribe uh, if you're interested in, uh, in online, maybe streaming on, on YouTube, um, a course. So best 73s and good DX and good luck and all that. And, uh, and thanks again for tuning in to Tech Stuff and More. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.